So as usual, I have provided a, a small script of, of today's workshop. And it's already in the discussion forum on talks. Uh, the PDF is in the discussion forum of the talks. Uh, so there are the links. So you, could, you don't, if you need it, you don't have to type them or, or find it otherwise. So um, here are the contents of my, my workshop. Uh, the plan for my workshop is so introduction, preliminaries release since the last conference is more or less done. So preliminaries are, uh, this workshop is, goes into details and it goes into special areas of Chase XCraft. So it's not for the beginner. So for, for, for beginner, uh, beginners should go to, to YouTube tutorials, to the Chase XCraft book and to the Chase XCraft wiki and to the example database, which is linked later on. Uh, there you find examples with source code. And uh, I would say the best thing is to take such an such a example and adapt to your needs. And uh, I want to remind you that there were previous conferences and there were also workshops and uh, webinars and, of course, um, many great talks from other people. And you can... Um, you can download uh, source code there. Yeah. Then, uh, as usual, this is the, the uh, a basic HTML page which runs JSX graph. Uh, not basic as uh, not the least, not the smallest case, the small because it also uses math checks. But uh, this is well, yeah, the basic. Uh, basic is to have a diff uh, where the chase scope is defined, and then you have to load the chase scope core. So uh, the plan for today is uh, I want to go into internationalization. I want to discuss uh, more or less uh, the the challenges which are, are faced uh, for chase scope in mobile devices. Then I want to say a few words about Chase Xcraft as an ES6 module. Then um, I want to show an example how you, how you can uh, allow users to to sketch on the in a construction. And then I want to discuss security uh, issues, which is this is uh, very advanced, I would say. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's start. So internationalization. This was a, a, a question by a, by a user in, in Google Groups. And he or she asked whether the, the numbers which are displayed in the Chase Extra conference, uh, construct, construction can be, uh, the, the, the digit can be separated by commas, like Usually we have a dot between uh, 0 0.5 and not a, and in Germany we have a comma. In other languages, it's, it's also completely different. And um, it turned out yes, there is an there is an a, an HTML5 API for this, the internationalization number format. Um, so um, you can call this JavaScript function internationalization number format. Then you type in the the um, the language uh, abbreviation, and then you type in some attributes. Uh, what you, for example, here you want to format uh, this number as a currency. And the currency is euro. And yeah, and th though this exists at least for for newer browsers, and uh, Chase XGraph uses this now. I would say we jumped uh, immediately to, to this example to show it to you. 
So, so here's an example without internationalization. So you know uh, the the axes are labeled by um, by uh, numbers formatted in in for English language uh, space, and also the info box which shows the coordinates of the point is uh, shown with uh, the digits are separated by dots. Okay, we can change this globally for a new, uh, for a construction by the board attribute international or intel and uh, enabled true. And uh, then we have to uh, to supply a locale, locale uh, namely which language you want to use. Okay, then uh, <clears throat> uh, you see the all numbers change to the German format. You have a, a comma as a separator. Also the also the the info box and uh, the number of digit for the info box changed. So we disable this again, and um, now. Uh, yeah, it's disabled. And um, though this is one, the, the first step, maybe this is uh, a pro probably this is sufficient for most cases. Uh, supply the internationalization in the as a board attribute. Okay, but now the next step is we can uh, supply internationalization or enable or disable internationalization for individual elements. And uh, here's an example. We can do this for the x-axis, uh, default x-axis. And you see here the x-axis uh, is uh, redefined. And here we uh, enable internationalization. Um, and the style is uh, unit, the unit is kilometers per hour, and the unit display is narrow. You, uh, if you wonder which which attributes are available, you have to go to this uh, MDN uh, uh, page up about an international number format. There, everything is uh, listed. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, then. <clears throat> Um, you see that uh, the x-axis is formatted uh, appropriately with German uh, numbers, number format, and uh, kilometer per hour as unit. Okay, we can do the same for the info box. And here, um, we use an, uh, two different to other uh, attributes, namely minimum fraction digits and maximum fraction digits. And, and you see, uh, so it uh, it displays uh, depending on what, what is uh, needed, four or five uh, uh, digits. Um, yeah, the number is three or uh, four or five digits. This is a, a feature which is somehow missing in, in default uh, JavaScript. There we have this attribute or this method to fixed, let's say three, and with the parameter three, then uh, every number is um, shortened or is rounded to three digits. Um, even, even if it's an integer, then three zeros will be appended. So, um, having minimum and maximum fraction digit is a way out of this problem. Okay, then um, we, uh, I can show you another example. Uh, yeah, new text. So here it's a text. Uh, 
and it uses the not so well known value tag of Chase Escaf. So if you supply a text with this value tag, then uh, this value and this yeah this value tag is evaluated, and the value tag has to contain Jesse code uh, language. Okay, uh, and this is uh, in the Italian uh, number format. And uh, the next one is uh, now we have uh, uh, degrees like here. So we just show this number, and uh, it's uh, the, the 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 unit uh, Celsius. Then uh, the same we can do for sliders. Yeah, here's a slider, and uh, so the name is Alpha, and uh, there the the international internationalization attribute is is a is a attribute of the slider. <clears throat> so next example. Um, Again, uh, a, a text, a dynamic text. Where is it? Uh, I don't. Uh, minus. It should be here. I don't know. Ah, uh, it's uh, yeah. It doesn't. It's an empty text. Yeah, okay. And of course, uh, you can make it dynamic, and this also works. Yeah. So uh, here I can drag this text, and it uh, changes the number. And uh, so the number format is again kilometer per hour. It's a narrow format, so the, the kilo, kilometers is closer to the number, and the maximum fraction digits is two. And here is a uh, this is an example. Uh, so, uh, if you need a, for some reason you need a fallback solution, so uh, for those who don't have uh, have a browser without this uh, number format, which which does not support this number format um it uh, you can fall back to fixed and uh, you have to check for use locally and um then you can format your number with the method uh, num format number local okay this is this is a way for let's say to do it for by hand to do it yourself to format a, a text yeah this is uh, this is internationalization, and um, but a one word of warning: use it with care, um, because it might to lead uh, to confusion for your students. Uh, if you have an input box, for example, uh, let's go to. To the database uh, uh yeah so uh for uh, if you have for uh, for some reason you have an input box and you and you and you expect to Um, to have an input and uh, to, to ex expect an numbers to be inputted, then um, if you don't, um, yeah, you have to, uh, uh, for for JavaScript or Jesse code, you have to input uh, uh, floating point numbers with a point. And uh, as far as I know, there is no, um, no internationalization 
or oh, I'm not aware of an internationalization which uh, formats input, uh, just formats output. And so if, if you expect the students to input numbers with a dot and they are displayed with a comma, then this might lead to confusion. So uh, please be careful and, and uh, you have to decide yourself uh, if you want to have it or not. So, okay. Yeah, uh, any questions? Okay, if not, then uh, Chase, it's stuff in mobile devices. So. Uh, Excuse me, Alfred, I do have uh, one question about this. Uh, probably not about the international uh, feature, but uh, about the info box. Um, digits. Uh, recently, I tried to find uh, out how I have, I can change uh, info box um, output for um, some, po for any point on, uh, on the board. In this case, that uh, X uh, coordinate will have different uh, digit numbers than uh, Y coordinate. It's very uh, usual situation in physics when they have very different uh, range in uh, both axes, and I didn't find it. I, uh, I okay, saw... we... yeah, yeah. Okay, this is this is not possible. Yeah, this is a good suggestion. Okay, thank you. I'm happy uh, to see this new feature in uh, GSX book, uh, GX graph. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, then I, I proceed. So, Chase X got in mobile devices. So, I, I, I think Martin had a question. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. no, no problem. But I just uh, wanted to uh, mention to him that in our MacLab library, we have a uh, box with different uh, digits for um, X and Y. Um, because of exactly what you described, because they can have different units or orders of magnitude. Martin, then, Martin, perhaps you can show it in your talk uh, or after you talk tomorrow uh, tomorrow or on Thursday. I can, can uh, mention this uh, and I can add it. To it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so next uh, topic is mobile devices. So Mobile devices keep us busy, <laughs> I want to say. So um, let's, uh, so this is also a problem which Mary Byrne uh, pointed out. So here you see uh, some Chase Fiddle and I am open it in a, in a uh, mobile device simulation and uh, you can scroll the page. But uh, you cannot scroll the page uh, uh, by by touching the chase issue of construction, and uh, so it may be if the if the chase issue of construction occupies the whole screen that you are trapped in the chase is or the user is trapped in the construction and cannot scroll uh, out of it. So. Actually, what we really not want uh, to have is a swipe detection. Uh, so far, we don't have it. So we uh, uh, so we um, have uh, so we introduced uh, um, oops. We introduced a feature called browser pen. I don't know why my uh, it's it's called browser pen, um, <clears throat> and it's a, it's a workaround. So here's the, the scrolling uh, outside, and uh, the scrolling inside doesn't. Yeah, it works. So, uh, but you have to tap twice 
And if you again tap, then it, it's lost. Tapping twice uh, makes a scrolling. So this is a workaround, uh, but it's not yet intuitive. And, and actually it will be replaced by some swipe detector. And, uh, but this has to be implemented. So this is a look into the, into the future. Okay, the next, uh, next problem with um, mobile devices is the following. Okay, I'm, yeah, now I'm back in desktop mode. Uh, in desktop mode, if I drag outside uh, of the of the construction or of the yeah, the construction, then uh, the dragging stops. So in a sense, it's not possible to move this point A outside of the construction. Yeah, <laughs> um, actually, uh, a user suggested that uh, it should be possible to drag. Uh, um, to to drag um, outside of the of the construction, it was suggested by user, and we um, we implemented it by uh, with a with a with the attribute move target. And then you can drag outside of it. Of course, this is very dangerous because uh, if I now uh, release the mouse pointer, then I never, I cannot, uh, yeah. It's, it may be that I cannot, I never find this point again. So, uh, so you have to, to use this move target very cautiously. However, um, so in this construction, move target is not uh, not enabled, and um, but uh, I'm in 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 uh, I'm in uh, mobile mode uh, in a mobile si simulation, and you see. I can I can drag the construction out uh, nevertheless. This is a this may be a, a welcome or not. It depends on on your construction. Um, what happened? So um, Mobile browsers recently introduced an event system, uh, a system called the, it's called pointer capture. So uh, if you tap on, a, on an HTML element or some element on the browser, then it gets a pointer capture and you can drag it until you, on the whole page, until you release it. This is somehow necessary for certain uh, uh, br uh, browser elements. And um, but this is sometimes unwanted for JSX graph. So um, what will happen, or what, what? How do we react? So in the in the next version, in the next minor release, one point six one, this uh, dragging outside of the construction on mobile devices uh, will be prevented by default. And if you want to have it, you have to use again this uh, attribute move target and then some larger uh, frame uh, around the construction like document. Okay, another feature which works on, uh, and which was also a problem, which was also noted by Murray Byrne is full screen mode. Uh, so if you, uh, started full screen mode of construction and then changed the orientation of the device. It didn't react, but this will be fixed in 1.61. So, okay, questions?
Okay, then <clears throat> um, next uh, big uh, step was in May, uh, version 1.5, we introduced uh, or we changed the code base to ES6 module system. So the big question is, are there any changes for you? And I would say no and yes. So the I wrote it down in a blog post uh, after we after the release. So if you include JSXCraft by using JSXCraft core, there should be no changes. It should work as uh, as always. So. However, if you uh, want to use JSXGraph as an AMD module, then uh, the, the big change is that it's now um, an unnamed uh, AMD module. If you don't know what, it's, what it is, an unnamed AMD module, then you're probably not affected. Um, the advantage of the new system is now, or, the, or what, what happened also during this, development uh, to the uh, this transition to the new code base was that common js is now importing with as a common js module is now supported again and uh, so it works again with node js so um, here's an example uh, on on the on the in this blog post there are some examples so jsx of core works like previously AMD module means uh, you need some required JS and uh, and have to sub uh, sub uh, supply now the 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 core the, the path. Um, importing is done uh, with like this JSX of core JS. Yeah, import JXG from JXG graph core JS from core JS. Uh, if you want to do an ES6 import, you have to use a MGAS, MJS. And uh, in in uh, J in node JS, you can uh, uh, import you, you have to use this this uh, common JS import. Why is it um, what? Why is Node.js interesting? Node uh, in Node.js you can uh, run uh, JSX graph on server side. So the way uh, to this, uh, for example, you can uh, have a text display internal, render a canvas, and then you can uh, save a. A JSX graph construction as a PNG, um, as a PNG image uh, on server side. So uh, this this may be useful uh, in some respects. Yeah. Okay. And there, are, I don't want to go into um, too much details. Um, you can also include uh, JSX graph. It's an npm packet in your in your project, yeah, and uh, also web workers work again, and uh, yeah, and uh, if you have some uh, special packing uh, requirements, if you, if you have a project and you want to pack uh, JSX stuff together with other uh, modules, then it may be interesting to don't. You that you don't uh, pack JSXGraph core, but the JSXGraph source code, then you uh, have to use the index JS of the source packet. So if you have questions, please uh, um, don't be shy to, to ask them uh, by mail or in Stack Overflow or in Google Groups. I'm happy to, to answer these. Yeah. This is ES6, <clears throat> and now uh, something to take home, so to say, um, namely 
I want I want you to enable your users to sketch curves. This is a small example which was created uh, during a e assessment meeting we had in Trondheim in in summer, and it's a collaboration with Michael Kalweit from Bochum in Germany, and um, yeah, I want to show you the result. Uh, the result is you with the mouse you can drag a curve like this. How can you do this? Or if you drag a second curve, then in this example, the previous curve is deleted. And uh, you can uh, uh, change the, the type of curve a little bit. <clears throat> OK. Um, how does, does such a thing work? Uh, for this, I. I, we have to go a little bit deeper in Chase Iscraft and and uh, I must say that um, Chase Iscraft by default um, distinguishes three modes, namely none, uh, drag and move origin. So none is if you if the mouse pointer is over, a plain, an empty spot in the construction. Dragging is if you drag something, and um, and move origin is if you uh, do some scrolling. Uh, yeah, it, it's not enabled at, at the moment, but uh, okay. Then uh, if you move, if you do some panning and 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 zooming, then it's move origin. And uh, though nothing prevents you to, to, to define additional modes uh, by uh, yeah, additional nodes, uh, modes, and uh, use them in in uh, event handlers which are supplied by you. So, but my suggestion is to um, to have some fixed uh, mode space uh, to let it free and start with uh, uh, hexadecimal uh, one in the third digit, like, like this. So here I defined um, uh, a new mode, board mode sketch with a certain an integer number. And I supplied uh, an event handler and uh, this event handler only uh, is active if as long as board is the board mode is none. So we don't want to interfere with dragging. This is too too dangerous. Okay, so that means if I if I um, point or click um, or have a down event uh, a down event on the board on an empty spot then it uh, it uh, it uh, it uh, transitions into the board mode sketch and it uh, sc starts to prepare a new sketch curve so this is a global variable then in on move events we do exact uh, we apply also a new uh, <clears throat> a new uh, event handler and we just do something as long as uh, so if if the board mode is equal to sketch and then we get the mouse position um, uh, create coordinates out of it and uh, push the coordinates to to uh, our data to our sketch curve and update the curve so this results into into this gray curve, which is now displayed. Okay, and this happened. This happens uh, as long as there's no up event. And in the up event, uh, again, we sketch. If we, we test, if we're in sketch mode, 
Then uh, we uh, uh, remove a previous existing curve element, so the black curve, so to say, and the point curve uh, and the point array. And uh, yeah, and then yeah, we do what's uh, written here. We go back to board of mode none. And uh, we we uh, we convert the sketch curve into a list of coordinates, and then uh, yeah, and then something interesting happens. We uh, <clears throat> we call an internal JSX graph algorithm called Viswa Lingam. Uh, this algorithm uh, extracts the most. Um, the, the most important features of a curve. And uh, so if we uh, supply the second parameter six, then uh, me, then this means um, the curve is reduced to six essential internal points. So it means it, it consists uh, of eight points, I mean the first and the last, and six internal uh, um uh, points. And then uh, we again convert it to JSX graph points and uh, create a curve. Oh, okay, there is a, a problem with uh, with editing, so this has, has to be removed. Uh, and then we, of these points, we uh, uh, create a cardinal spline. So, <clears throat> uh, here again, so if I do a long curve, then it's again reduced to six points. Okay, then I uh, we can do this with a second example, uh, and we can uh, we can uh, we can use the same program to sketch a polynomial of a given degree. And uh, let's say we um, we want to to, uh, to sketch a polynomial of degree uh, d, then it needs d plus one points. Uh, therefore, we have to apply Viswalingam Viswalingam with uh, d degree plus one minus two points. And uh, we can do this. And then we create a function graph out of uh, a Lagrange polynomial out of these points. So let's see the, the uh, result. So the degree is three and we can construct a polynomial of third degree like this. And the points are uh, now shown and we can uh, manipulate it a little bit more. Uh, degree three like this, then it's like this, or uh, degree two, we can uh, uh, have a, a par parabola. Yeah, and if you want to, this may be helpful if you want your users to uh, <clears throat> to input a curve of a, or a function graph of a special type, um, then you can uh, uh, force it with this with, with such an application. Okay, questions. Ah. Yes. Um, so um, the, uh, the the question is that sketch curve can be stored in any variable to be graded in in Moodle. Yes. Uh, namely, um, the essential thing is you have the points. Uh, the point array and this point array can be uh, uh, can then be sent to Moodle, either with uh, in, in 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 stack or in in formulas. Okay, more questions. So uh, time is uh, running fast. Should I point out the next uh, the security issue? 
Do you still have patience? Yeah. So there's a message by Eudes uh, or Oides. Maybe just a quick question. Uh, I, I really like what you just presented now. Does it apply on um, both, I mean, like a uh, mobile device or with tablets? Yes, it should work everywhere. Oh, great. So you don't need any special setting to have that working on a tablet? No. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, maybe I, I make it short. And the last chapter, security, but it's important. So if you talk about security, we uh, have to talk about who needs to be secured. So the first uh, scenario is securing the chase extra construction uh, from accidentally overwriting CSS or chase JavaScript. Um, so you want to supply a JSX graph in a big project where many libraries are added and you want to, uh, your CSS and, and JavaScript want to be uh, secured, then you might think about Shadow DOM. We will have here a talk by Holger Engels on Thursday about using Shadow DOM. Um, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. So JSX graph, um, supports Shadow DOM. But it's, uh, think of it as a, video, as a video tag in HTML. It contains a lot of internally defined HTML elements you don't, and you don't have, um, normally you don't uh, have access to this internal, uh, in, in, internal of, of a video tag. But the more important uh, thing is uh, we want to secure the hosting website from JSX graph code. And here's, uh, a, here's the problem. Uh, let's say JSX graph is displayed in a diff element as we already, we have it since 15 years now. Uh, then uh, the JavaScript, so JSX graph construction is JavaScript code and um, Java's malicious JavaScript code may launch a cross-site scripting a scripting attack. So here, here's an uh, here's an example. Uh, here's our co co uh, Moodle course, and uh, I have this. So, so I have this. Yeah, and it's a diff. Uh, the diff is, yeah, JavaScript is, is shown in the diff. Maybe that's not that important. Uh, it's, a, it's in a diff. And now I'm editing this page. And uh, yeah, it uses the JSX of plugin. And beside the usual JSX of code, I introduce an alert document cookie. Okay. So, and now if you reload the page, we already saw it, then there's an alert box where you see my, uh, where you see my Moodle session cookie. And so in, if you can display it in an alert box, you also may send it with web, web sockets to, to a server and, uh, and uh, capture my, uh, my cookie. Okay, I will take it out again. And, uh, and this uh, may not happen. Well, Well, uh, or may it happen, um, but uh, it's uh, security is a matter of trust. So if you if you are if you or other teachers in your school or your university are producing JSX graph code, then uh, these users are trusted, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, there's need, no need to worry. Or yeah. Uh, there's no need to, to worry. 
Also, uh, if you if you have an input box like the one we we saw, uh, like this, um, like this, the user can supply a function, and uh, so he may he or she may introduce uh, malicious code, but uh, this malicious code is. <laughs> Uh, only affecting the user himself. And uh, <clears throat> and um, though this no need to worry, but uh, uh, you have to worry if you if you uh, import JSX graph constructions from some open source uh, database, or no questions from some uh, database, then it's not longer um, it's not longer uh, secure. The, the users cannot longer be trusted. Or if you allow the students to uh, to supply JavaScript code, and this JavaScript code is stored in the database in Moodle, and then uh, delivered to other students or to you. Um, so oh, here's an example missing. So. Um, this uh, scenario here is relatively secure um, because here you you have to supply Jesse code code and this is parsed and it's very it will be very difficult to uh, introduce malicious code. But in general, the solution is to sandbox the content into an iframe element. And this is done in the latest stack release. And uh, maybe I'll show you uh, first an example. Uh, yeah, here's an example. Uh, so this JSX graph, the white part of the window is, uh, is contained in an iframe. The blue background is the hosting side, so to say. And uh, inside, we can uh, have a direct uh, communication with the with the JS um, uh, construction as always. Maybe also uh, if we drag a point, we can uh, get the, the points out of it. Uh, uh, but we can move uh, or we can. Um, Send also, we can control the, the construction also by moving from the outside, from the hosting side, like here, move a point or get coordinates. Uh, these are now in the in the console again, like this. Okay, how is it done? Uh, and yeah, in the workshop script, there's a full uh, example. Uh, the, the main thing is, uh, yeah, it's a quite a big uh, chunk of code. Um, so this is, this is a version for the paranoid. Uh, so we, we don't allow anything besides calling JavaScript in this uh, iframe. So it's not even allowed to to uh, load to, to have any contact from this JavaScript. It's comp uh, from this iframe. It's completely sandboxed, and uh, maybe again to the script. Um, so the only thing is uh, we have to allow scripts, and there are no navigate to, no connect, no worker. Uh, no scripts, nothing. And uh, okay, and uh, this, yeah, uh, what is what is done? We um, in the first step we download the JavaScript core and the JavaScript JS uh, CSS uh, source in in a variable here. And uh, uh, and inject this into our, our iframe. So here we create our iframe. 
um, yeah, we create our our iframe, and uh, the 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 important thing is we just uh, we can sandbox it with these with these parameters, and uh, and then uh, this iframe it contains also yeah and the and the source code is injected with the source doc attribute of an iframe this is not very well known uh, yeah so uh, this is done with this uh, source doc attribute and then this iframe is created by a pent child and now you can there's a message system um for the you can uh, send messages to the iframe and from the iframe Maybe it's more uh, better visible in the script. So uh, the window adds an event listener to the iframe. And uh, yeah, and, and the iframe can send uh, messages to its parent and uh, and vice versa. And one has to develop a certain message system. I did uh, use a JSON for it and, and some uh, uh, UUIDs so that, uh, to make it even more secure or to support uh, several frames. And uh, yeah, and then uh, you have this uh, communication between the parent and the, and the iframe. And one uh, last word of warning is, uh, so um, for the sandboxing, for the sandboxing attribute, um, I have allowed uh, enabled allow scripts, which allows JavaScript. This is necessary, and uh, I didn't allow allow same origin uh, because if you allow allow same origin, then um, then uh, the the iframe has access to your cookies, and this um, must be avoided at, at any in any case. So never allow both in in one sandbox, uh, because then you are lost. Yeah. So um, I put this uh, example, or this example is in the in in. Uh, Chase Fiddle and the, and the link is in the workshop uh, PDF. So if you uh, thinking about security for your project, then you might think about uh, using iframes. And um, I must say this is probably the way to go because uh, um, in uh, uh, exploit if if uh, user data is is on the web, then it's usually uh, a nightmare scenario for a learning management uh, website. Okay, this, this is what I wanted to say. I hope you uh, have taken something with you and uh, yeah, questions. <laughs>